This is actually one of the rare occasions where I've been lost. Uh, I'm getting confused here. I'm getting low on gas too. If I had my phone, can't find that. Don't have a map. I wouldn't mind some eggs anyways. I've got another issue with a wheel bearing. Even if the wheel bearing makes it, I've got a flat tire here. It's been one of those adventures where it's just one thing after another. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. Driving this back road, um, Joe gave me directions here. So this road is brutal. Basically, it's going to take an hour to go like 40 kilometers because you can only go like whew, 20 kilometers an hour. That's what I'm doing. It's just brutal rough. Like it's going to end up ruining my truck by the time I get there, Joe. <laughs> of course, he had vehicle problems too, apparently. We'll have to talk about that in the morning. <laughs> so, I've got a bit of a situation here. I found Joe last night, and then I decided to go and find my own campsite in, in the dark, and there's so many back roads, and I've been driving around all morning trying to figure out where I came from, I can't find his camp again. I've been driving all these back roads, nothing looks familiar. I'm totally lost on these back roads. I've never been to this area. And it's a little unnerving because I'm down to half a tank of gas and it's a long way to town. So I really don't know what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna go try to find the spot that I camped at again and try to maybe trace my uh, tire tracks is about all I can do is I have been driving all morning, wasting gas, and I don't even know how to get out of here to get back to town. Every uh, road I try doesn't look familiar anymore. <laughs> it's quite the situation, actually. You gotta laugh at it. I'm, And I haven't seen anybody to even ask directions. So, I've seen two grouse, that's it. But, I don't know, and I can't find my phone. Otherwise, I'd have the pin on my phone. Now I can't find my phone either. I probably left it back at Joe's camp when I was talking to him last night before I set my camp up. So now, I can't even get directions off the phone. We'll see how this pans out. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, I just flagged down a truck. And I did find my original camp was here. Uh, I had the hammock. Uh, in the trees here, but it seems that I got to go back this way and uh, <laughs> I don't know how I get lost like this. I mean, this is actually one of the rare occasions where I've been lost because usually I pay attention and that so keep in mind you got to pay attention to the back roads you take or at intersections maybe mark it somehow with a flag or something because it's easy to do. Uh, I've done it before, but uh, when you're driving around in the dark, it's easy to do, and then you forget, well, did I come from this road or this road or that road? You get to an intersection with four or five different roads, and it can be confusing. But anyway, it seems like I gotta go down this way, so according to them. <laughs> oh boy, so even with directions, now there's another junction. Uh, I'm getting confused here because nothing, none of the roads I'm taking seem to be where I came from last night. I'm getting low on gas too. I got some food and I'm not staging this. Like this is one of the first times I've been lost in the bush 
on the back roads, but there's a million back roads and there's junctions everywhere. Maybe I'll have to wait for winter and uh, follow somebody's tracks out of here or something. I, I just don't know. Physically, I'm going to have to follow somebody to the highway or something to figure out this out. How do you get lost like this is ridiculous. There's a lake I've seen up here. I'm just going to camp there. And maybe in a, a couple of days, maybe Joel will figure out to come looking for me because I cannot figure out how to get out of here. And I'm getting pretty frustrated, to be honest with you. If I had my phone, can't find that. If I had a map, don't have a map. See, the you know, I'm always advocating be prepared. You know, like, it's not like I'm going to die. I've got food. I'll go to that lake, see if there's fish, and hang out till somebody shows up that I can follow out of the bush if I have to, even if it's a week from now. You can tell I'm frustrated. That's another thing, okay? So you can learn from this experience I'm going through. Carry a map book of the area that you're in. Even if I had a map book, maybe I could figure it out. So my big problem is you come to a junction like this where the roads go this way, that way, but there's never any sign as to where you are, how far. Um, I'm getting more and more lost as I go here. So I don't really know what to do. I cannot even find that lake that I seen this morning now. Which road was it on? I mean, it's crazy. I'm telling you. I don't have the gas to keep trying to find my way out of here. I'm just going to string my hammock for the night. Have a nap hours and hours of trying different roads and they all end or just not the right roads uh it's a little irritating or discomforting like kind of a helpless feeling you know so now i almost have to have somebody lead me out of here to the highway just to get back to town if i even have enough gas for that cook something up have a nap and uh, forget about it <laughs> Ben, he thinks I'm mad at him now because I was irritated. It's okay. Maybe he senses that something's not right too, eh? That could be. That could be. It'll be okay. We'll get you some food. Just trying to think how many times I've been lost. Probably three times on foot where I had to spend a night or two even. Probably three times as well in a vehicle where I couldn't figure out how to get out of a back road situation. So not bad in my whole career in the bush, the amount of time and uh, years and years that I've spent in the bush. I mean, that's pretty good actually, but it's hard not to panic, but you can't panic when you get lost. That's the thing. Um, then you start making bad decisions. I'm not too worried about it really, but um, it's just a little unnerving when you can't figure out where you came from and how to get out. And this is legit. Like I say, I'm not staging this. I am legitimately stranded or lost. But weather's good. What more can you ask for, eh? <laughs> more gas. Well, I just, I had a nap all right. Now it's almost dark. Try not to panic if this happens to you. Maybe I'll have to stay another day. <laughs> Be cooking in the dark again, I guess. That's just right. Well, I'm gonna have this in red. And try again tomorrow. See if I can find my way out of here. That was really good. I mean, you couldn't get lost in a nicer area, but uh, 
unless uh like i say i get to town right away i'm gonna run out of gas and just be stuck out in the middle of nowhere i'm like two hours from the nearest town and i've got like just over a quarter tank of gas i burnt up all my gas today just trying to find my way back to joe's camp i cooked my steak uh now i don't have much for food so like, is anybody going to come looking for me eventually, like Joe or anybody? I put a sign down at the end of the road here because they probably wouldn't come looking on this uh, particular road. But I've tried every main road, all the side roads that I can think of, and I just cannot figure out how I got this lost last night. We'll see you in the morning. So I moved in the middle of the night to a spot here, strung my hammock from this building to the truck. And I'm just getting packed up and uh, Joe's been looking for me, so it's good I came to a main road. There's Joe. Hey, in the truck! I had to scream at Finn, went after some dog that... Come on, in the truck! Joe's got my phone and he found me this morning, so... Joe to the rescue, <laughs> first thing in the morning, right on. Well, that is fluky. <laughs> and it was a smart move to come to this major junction, major four-way, and Joe's just camped down over here. He moved his camp, and uh, they were looking for me all day. Anyways, let's go have a coffee with Joe. Ay ay ay. What a nice sound to hear him. <laughs> but without the phone, yeah, then I would have had a pin. Oh, you yeah. would have found us in I would have found two you then. seconds. Just follow the pen, right? Yeah. So, well, what? it's a case of relying on technology, right? That's what we yeah, do that's sometimes. True. All is well we in the great outdoors. We Look at the Basically, I'm going to start and carry an extra five gallons of gas for these kind of situations. So I'm going to go into town and get some gas. There's a little lake that I did find, Mosquito Lake, of course, my favorite insect named after that. I'm going to go fishing later is what I want to do to end this video with a catch and cook of uh, hopefully a nice rainbow. But, oof, you know, pressure's off. I found, Joe found me finally because of a smart decision to get on a major route instead of a little side road that nobody would think to go looking. So... Let's get on with our day. It's a relief. I wasn't too worried because, but I know Joe was worried, as he said. Um, he was starting to panic that maybe I drove off the road into a creek bed or down a cliff or something. So he uh, was going to give it uh, today and then phone search and rescue. So that would have been embarrassing if uh, they came looking. Hopefully it's another 10 years or so before this happens. It seems about every 10 years I get lost on the back roads. So it doesn't matter who you are, things can go wrong. Things you don't plan on, you lose your phone, you get lost, it happens. So again, nothing staged about this. Uh, this is an actual event that happened and it could happen to you, so try to be prepared. Everything would have been just honky-dory if I didn't lose the phone. Okay, well, let's go and uh, get some gas and uh, get to that lake. I've got the kayak still. I can uh, troll around and hopefully catch a nice fish later today. And uh, Joe's going to show me some patches of mushrooms. Well, I may as well support the local farmers. I mean, I wouldn't mind some eggs anyways. Fresh eggs. Five bucks for... Uh, Free range, that's pretty good, I think. Self-serve, get a little baggie for the change. There's one dozen left in there. I'm sure they're not broken, maybe. Looks good. Right on. Fresh eggs. Might be handy if I get lost again. Checked all his that he knows up and down the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice 
Yeah, exactly. It was almost like a thunder shower, I think, or something. You know what I mean? It was isolated showers or whatever. Really? I'm do something here, though. Really? You gonna grab all this from here? Joe's, no Joe's just cleaning up about $5,000 worth of mushrooms here. <laughs> Lots of times you get lots of dirt in the cracks and stuff. I just cut the rotten parts off. Just take it out. What's that? I don't think Tom was that was sure to be happy or sad for it. There. Yeah. <laughs> we just picked his patch. <laughs> what are well, you? What? I don't know. Uh, it's, it's not his, but it's a place that he likes. Nobody to owns the mushrooms, Joe. Well, I do. I think lots of years when it's <laughs> like good, you can literally just walk behind camp here or across the road over this way, and there's mushrooms, right? Mm -hmm. But, but it's, it's not not, always... a, not a great year. Yeah, and wow, you guys did good today. That's yeah, the thing about the bad. mushroom business is like you don't know. It's like being a farmer, but you don't know the wet. You know, if the weather's not good enough, then you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like it's either going to be or like if the birds eat all really, your cherries. Yeah, the, the mushrooms can spread across a fairly large area if there's the right weather, right? We'll follow the fun guy. The fun guy. So there's a pine. Oh, that's, that's a nice one. Number one. That's a number one, Joe says. Yeah. So the Japanese I, love that. Would they? Well, they can't have it because I'm eating it. Well, I'm going to cook up some of these tonight with a pork uh, steak. That'll be great. Let's see what else we can find. So those are rotten lobsters right there, Greg. See those ones? They're gone too far. See how red they are? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, they're finished, eh? They get really stinky, those ones, too. And then my other pine patch is just off to the left over here. So we'll just look through here really quick. I like the pines. They're good. The flavor profile on them is incredible. It's my favorite mushroom by far. What's this? I don't know. I, I you don't know what that is? Funnel mushroom or something. It's definitely not anything that's edible. It's so, very much. A, a so lot. don't eat these ones. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we can see that we have a pine here because the ground or the moss is pushing up pushing everything up from the bottom and there you go that's a nice one too that's Joe. perfect number one isn't that nice number one again don't they have an amazing smell it's it's very unique the smell mm -hmm. for sure you never ever ever mistake one if you no i'm trying one. to think of what it smells like but i can't really get it Nobody can. Lots of people try to describe it as like, you know, the sweet hot candies, the little heart candies. Oh, you know what? The cinnamon heart candies. That's right. Exactly. I think that's the smell I was looking for. Those cinnamon heart candies. Mm -hmm. You bet. Okay. okay, so a couple more and I'm good for uh, tonight for dinner. Let's find some chanterelles too, eh? Sure. Got a flag here. But good for dinner. Go with my uh, pork steak. I just need a couple more. That's about it. If you feel the stem and it's super hard, yeah. that means that the, they're not wormy. That's no, no, the, this is hard. Yeah, that's how the buyers check them. So when you go take them to the buying station, they'll feel every single one. And if they're ever squishy on the stem, then they won't buy them, right? Mm-hmm. You can tell it's dry because they crack like that. Right? Yeah. Got a white chanterelle. So I'm not here to so uh, sell there. them. So that one right there, a uh, squirrel or like a deer would have chewed on that, Greg. Uh -huh. That's why there's a little bit missing. Right. Well, they didn't get it all. Nope. And the stem's firm, eh? Yep. Yeah, it is. Right. 
Now what you want to do is just feel around here and make sure we didn't miss it. I don't see no bumps. It looks like it was just a single. Oh, there's one beside it too. Yeah. That's Couple nice ones. Something ate this one a bit too, but they probably got enough for a decent dinner. There's one there. You see it just coming out. These should be nice and firm. That's perfect. It's a number one again. You found some, did you? Yeah, I did. Another one under the moss here. About half the distance to me, it's peeking out this way. Oh yeah, I'll get these ones first. Feel around. That's a really good little spot. Well, I'm going to be eating good. There's one here too. Where? Feel that bump right there. Which bump? This? To your left. Here? Oh, yeah, here. There okay, you there. You see how hard they can be to, to find? Because that's all you saw. You look under there, and there's a small guy. Oh, that's a beauty. Look at how cute that little fellow is. That's a cute button. But these are all nice. I've got lots now, Joe. I do. What do you think of this, Greg? What do you mean? This picking. Picking? No, well, it's a lot, a lot better than getting lost. <laughs> hey, we found you. Yes. I was a little stressed, I'll tell you. Were you? I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't even stress out because I had food. Well, I was more worried. But the gas. What would I tell all your YouTube fans? Yeah. I lost Gray Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> They'd never forgive me. Another white chanterelle. I've got like two pounds at least. Still got some more. No shortage, eh? No. And there's a coral mushroom. They sure like to hide under the moss. Well, the pines too. Well, what's amazing, these white chanterelles, on a good year, they'll be this big. Mm -hmm. And they open up like a flower, yeah, right? too dry. Yeah, exactly. Nice white chanterelle. Joe's got a nice one. And then there's a bunch over here. Another nice bunch. See how they grow in like three? Yeah. Well, you may as well keep most of these mushrooms. I'll pay you for them, Greg. I don't care. Yeah. You'll be able to uh, buy yourself something nice for Christmas or something. I don't need anything nice. Maybe a GPS. <laughs> when we first showed up here, I came up here and I came up with a thing like this. His eyes lit up. Rob's eyes were just like, this is crazy. He couldn't believe it. It was nuts. I come down like this with these white chandrels and what's weird is look at how nice they are here like, they're not dirty no exactly and that's like a perfect little button right there Tiny. Cool. That yeah. one's, oh the twins the nuggets well that's not bad for 15 minutes yeah that rate right at the grocery store is probably worth 50 to 100 bucks all right, eh? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Be a three. So what's, a day. what's this? This is that's a three. Okay. That's a two. Those are threes. This is it's a four. four. That one's kind of rotten. You probably don't want that. Take that one. Yeah, I would say flags. I mean, most of them. That's a broken four. four. That's a four. That's a three. But the fours, okay, I don't so, know, you'd have to have some. So that's a four. Those are fours. We'll call those fours. There's a little brown bat right here. Just sleeping in the crack of the uh, picnic table.
But I want to finish this video up with catch and cook. I got some pines that Joe and I found yesterday evening. And uh, I'd like to get a nice rainbow. There's apparently nice two, three pound rainbow in this lake. And I see them jumping. So, you know, it should be easy enough with the MEP spinner. I don't have a pink one. I lost that. But um, I have a green and black one, which should work as well. Well, I just had a fish that got off. That uh, seems to happen quite often where you're trying to get the camera. I had the fish right up to the boat. They're jumping. I'll get another one, but you know, trying to get underwater footage of them, a lot of times you just end up losing them. I should have just at least kept that one, but I'll get more, they're jumping. So I've only been out here 10 minutes and I caught one, had them right up to the boat. Okay, I got a pan fry, and this time instead of trying to get underwater footage, I want to at least make sure I have breakfast. As long as he doesn't get out of the boat. <laughs> so, breakfast. Okay, that time uh, I really wanted to at least have a fish, so I made sure I got this one. Now, if I try to get underwater footage, at least I have something to go with my mushrooms. And uh, that's cool. So we'll keep fishing here. I've only been out for about five minutes and I got that guy. So, and what I find is paddling backwards because the rolled, hot, rolled <coughs> road, rod holders are behind me and you can't see when you're getting a bite. So if I put it in front and roll backwards, I can see when I was getting a bite and I was able to hook them right away. So I think that's what I'm gonna have to do is just roll backwards and just leave the rod there right on success i mean i don't know why they wouldn't put the road rod holders in front of you where you can see them how are you supposed to see them behind you when you're paddling well we'll put the rod holders right where they can't see the rod and that way if they get a fish they won't know I mean, I don't know, man. Like I say, they don't want you keeping them or throwing them back. So, ooh, almost lost, almost dropped my camera. So you're not supposed to release these fish. But fish are jumping, so get this guy in and see if I can't catch another rainbow. Then I can have two. You know, it's just fun catching fish. I don't care who you are. It's just fun, especially for kids. Get your f kids out fishing. If you haven't never taken your kids fishing, I mean, take them fishing, man. Kids love fishing and catching something. Even if it's a yellow perch. Oh, he came off the hook. In the morning, I have been procrastinating, wow, other than getting lost, for a week. I mean, I went to the island and spent more time than I was supposed to been here longer than i supposed to because i was lost and uh should have left today probably but i mean i just have such a hard time leaving such a nice area i mean the lake is so calm the fish are jumping like why what why do i want to go home <laughs> well you know or go back or like why can't i just stay here <laughs> and that's what i did <laughs> just stayed I'll still eat these yellow perch, but, or Finn will. It seems like I got a wheel bearing going on the truck now too. So this has been quite the trip. Typical wheel bearing noise. 
You're always going to get a little bit of dirt on these. It's just hard to get them off to get all the dirt. Chantrells, a little bit of dirt never hurt you. Some clean off nice, like this guy. Certainly smell the uh, pines. What I really like is these pine mushrooms. I mean, the chanterelles are good too. But the pines are dynamite. The pines, they kind of have the texture of almost lobster. Very firm texture. Very nice. Hands down, I like the pines better. I mean, the chanterelles are good too, but it's the texture of the pine mushrooms that is the real winner. If that wheel bearing gives out on me, I might be stranded again. Mmm, those pines are good. As long as you have dry charcoal, this is probably the quickest way to have a base of coals and a quick fire. Joe is on his way back here from the city and he's going to bring me a wheel bearing um, because the wheel bearing is just making such a noise I don't think it's going to get me home so I've had a lot of setbacks uh, with the vehicle so of course it's a long weekend so I went into town thinking maybe I could get the part the other day but then I had to phone Joe and get him to bring the, the wheel bearing because everything's closed for three days so Gonna be closed for the weekend and Monday. Well, I got packed up and uh, Joe never showed up with the wheel bearing, so all I can hope for, I don't really know why, but I got no cell service to find out why he didn't show up. But hopefully the wheel bearing holds on and I can get out of here. So now I got another problem. Even if the wheel bearing makes it, I've got a flat tire here. I see I got a sharp piece of metal. I do have a spare. <laughs> But there's no crank to get the spare down. And the other problem is, I've done this before. Tie a ratchet strap or something strong to the spare and break the little cable. But this one's a chain, about a quarter inch chain. I'll never be able to break that. Wait and see if somebody comes by with a uh, little plug-in compressor for the lighter. And see if it'll hold enough air to get to where I have tools to get the spare down or... It's been one of those adventures where it's just one thing after another. And how do you prepare for every situation? That's my own fault because I knew the spare didn't have a crank. So I can only blame myself for that. I should have at least tried to find 
a crank for it or something but now i'll have to figure out a way to get the spare down but you know there's no point getting upset when these things happen somebody always shows up to give you a hand so sit tight uh the thing is the tire's salvageable like it can be repaired but if i drive on it i'll wreck the sidewalls and they're brand new tires i don't want to do that so here we sit i'm going to see if i can manufacture something from the tools i have it looks to me like this quarter inch drive might fit in the square thing that turns it but i don't know if i can find stuff to reach this kind of fits but i can't really see how far i have to get in there get a stick i can see it and it looks like that quarter inch might fit i need a straight stick well i've got a length it's got a flat groove as well as a square. I'm thinking I can take this piece of metal, flatten it, pound it into this socket so it doesn't turn, and then put my extension on it. It's going to be very close to reaching. Oh, the socket's not going to want to fit in there. Oh, look at that. Maybe I can, maybe I can take this whole piece off. That'll definitely work if I can get the socket in and if it fits. <laughs> That's the other thing. I can actually get the socket through now. Check my length again. There. This. Oh, I'm still short. Oh boy. Don't get in these situations. But you know what? For me to be prepared for everything that I've run into in the bush, I'd have to drag a 20 foot trailer with tools and presses and everything else so but that's one thing i get good at is improvising i can pro i'll probably figure out how to get the spare off eventually i do have my jack and i'm going to try to get it under the mechanism that holds the tire you know it's a round circle piece that's uh wider than the rim kind of thing i'm going to try to bend it with the jack and try to get the tire to fall down to the ground through the hole if I can bend it with the jack. It's all I can think of right now. Got to get the spare. So Joe showed up and uh, brought a wheel bearing, which now I don't think I need because I think it's the shock. And we were able to get the tire down, but what happened was uh, somebody stopped and they had a Nissan and they actually had the jack. So. I suppose I should have videoed that, but you never know if people want to be on video or whatever. But his crank to get the tire down fit, and that's how we got it down. End of story. Let's get on with things. All morning trying to get that thing off, and I'll never put it back on that thing again unless I have the proper crank. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all you subscribers and all you viewers, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.